from Austin, Texas. It's the Cube covering OpenStack Summit 2016. Brought to you by the OpenStack Foundation and headline sponsors Red Hat and Cisco. Now here are your hosts, Stu Miniman and Brian Gracely. Welcome back to the Cube. We're at OpenStack Summit 2016 in Austin. I'm Stu Miniman, joined with Brian Gracely, and happy to have back on the program Balaji Sivasubramanian, and first time on the program, Vish Jaka. Uh, both gentlemen are with Cisco. I've uh, been talking uh, a couple times with Cisco, talking about uh, partnerships with Red Hat, of course, all the updates uh, from Metaplot and uh, NFE solutions, UCS, a whole lot of stuff. Uh, Absolutely. We've got a broad portfolio. Uh, but uh, first, uh, Vish, since your first time on the program, right. introduce yourself a little, what your role is, and Absolutely. what you're doing here at OpenStack. Absolutely. Well, yeah. So I'm Vish Jaka, uh, part of the product management team in the UCS uh, uh, group. Uh, my focus is on the cloud solutions, uh, specifically focusing on OpenStack. So we have a bunch of uh, initiatives and uh, solutions that we would like to uh, talk with you guys. Excellent. All right. And, and Balaji, you know, how's OpenStack fit into what you're working on these days? So yeah, I mean, I manage sort of the cloud native solutions uh, at Cisco. So one of the solutions is OpenStack solutions with, that we do with partners. So what do you call self-managed OpenStack solutions? Cisco obviously is providing managed service through the Metapod and through service provider focus in the, in the NFV use case. But so we are responsible for the self-managed piece. And the other piece that I work on is on the container space. So I, I lead the, the content open source effort defining policy for container workloads. Yeah, so Cisco's obviously been in the compute space for a long time, doing very, very well. Uh, you know, like, like you said, uh, we've talked about the telco side of things, we talked about Metapod. Talk about uh, you know, how your partners are understanding OpenStack and containers and all these open things, which is you know, sort of new in, in, you know, in the Cisco channel and the Cisco partner space. How is that evolving for them? Yeah, I think the partners are, uh, you know, when we look at selling any of these solutions, um, you know, we, we obviously, we're hardware, you know, we, we go sell the hardware, but sure. we're trying to find some use cases to sell to, because customers are, you know, if you are just selling the hardware, you're sort of the last on the list of people they will talk to, right? They're trying to solve the, the use case problem, right? I want to figure out the, how do I build a cloud and all those things. So if you're just the hardware, you know, you're sort of the last one to talk to. So by, by providing this kind of bundle solutions that we do with Red Hat in this case of OpenStack, um, we are moving ahead, you know, the partners are able to move ahead in the, in the conversation. So now they are saying, you want to do OpenStack cloud, you know, we have a solution with Cisco that we can sell to, right. um, which has OpenStack, you know, fully integrated solution. So in a way, I think the partners, it's helping the partners to be more business, um, more relevant to the business. Right. Um, so, OpenStack, we've, we've been talking a bunch, we were talking earlier about networking with OpenStack, we've been talking about a lot of different things. Give us a sense of how broad does Cisco think about OpenStack in terms of not just OpenStack, but where it has to, to link into the rest of things that are going on. What, what are you guys thinking at? What's top of mind sort of every day in terms of saying, how do I make this solution easier? What else do I have to include? Those types of things. Yeah, so I think uh, we look at, um, so there are a lot of deployments of OpenStack in the world. I think, you know, I think you've seen in the keynote and everything else. But most of them are mostly custom, right? We even see um, that customers are trying to build custom solutions more and more. And um, that works, but that's not sustainable. So right. our goal is to make it more um, mainstream as possible, right? I think, I think even now, even with our validated design, with our validated solution behind it, people are still asking for customization. So our goal is to make it more mainstream as possible. Yeah. Uh, that's sort of the... That makes sense. The, the, the goal is to win, provide something repeatable and uh, reliable that customers can roll out. When, uh, the, what we have been hearing throughout the summit is uh, lack of uh, enough skilled people. So if, uh, if, people, uh, if uh, companies had enough uh, skill set, they could all uh, roll out custom uh, clouds, but uh, that's not the case. And customers are looking for uh, companies like us, trusted partners, to uh, deploy their uh, OpenStack clouds at the end of the day. They want to run their business, not necessarily spend their resources on uh, uh, standing up uh, infrastructure and uh, uh, maintain a fragile uh, environment. They want something reliable, uh, secure, and uh, highly available. That, that's what customers are looking for, and that's what we are trying to address with our uh, solutions. 
Right, so Vishy, you've had a couple of speaking sessions. Right. I think you've done some, might have one coming up. Uh, give us a, some of the highlights of what you're talking about this week. Absolutely, so, uh, so the, the sessions is a mix of what we have been hearing so far from our customers. Like Balaji mentioned, it's about uh, use cases. We uh, Obviously we want to sell uh, UCS, but we want it to be more relevant to what customers are trying to do. And while they are standing up there uh, in private cloud, uh, they want to have a mimic a public cloud experience within their enterprise. So with with uh, with managed service or with public cloud, they lose the uh, control and the data sovereignty, uh, reliability, and security. They want to replicate all that in house, and this is something what we have been hearing from customers. So it's essentially sharing those uh, I mean uh, those learnings with the customers. Then uh, talk to them about what are the various options that customers have. It's not like one size fits all. Th that's not the case with OpenStack, right? So it's multiple options, the various uh, uh, options in terms of storage, in terms of uh, OpenStack versions, in terms of capabilities. Uh, put it all out there in front of the customers. It's up to the customers to choose what works best for them. At the end of the day, we will be with them uh, throughout their journey right from deploying the solution, maintaining it, and providing a single point of support for them. Uh, uh, they, they don't want to, we don't want customers to worry about their infrastructure. We want them to be focusing on their business. That's what gets them uh, successful. That's, how, that's what gets Cisco successful in the long run. Right. Yep. So t today there's a there's a big track around containers. Yep. Containers, according to the user survey, you know, top one, two, three things that people are interested in doing. Uh, containers, VMs change networking, radically change networking. Things are moving around, they become virtual interfaces. Containers change it yet again. How does Cisco look at containers and what are some of the things that you guys are doing to hopefully make it simpler? Uh, yeah, so I can, I can take that one. Um, I think we, we, I fundamentally view that the containers is a real, so real technology, right? First of all, you know, when we looked at SDN back in the days, right? I mean, there's, there's a lot of hype behind it in some ways. I think I believe containers actually solve a real problem. And so we believe that um, containers adoption is smaller right now, mm -hmm. but we believe that as things move on, um, containers would become a significant form factor for application workload to be there. Yeah. Um, so we have to make, again, our uh, products relevant in the marketplace. Uh, you know, obviously from a, you know, we have to add value to the ecosystem. The way the container uh, cloud native applications are built, they assume the infrastructure doesn't, the, the, the infrastructure is not relevant. You know, they just try to build a, the intelligence right. of uh, reliability and scaling and all those things already on the software layers. So where does the vendors like Cisco or any other vendors make, make, make ourselves relevant there? So one of the effort we are doing around this space is a project called, uh, open source project called Contiv, mm -hmm. C-O-N-T-I-V dot I-O. Okay. Um, where what we're bringing to the market, what we're bringing to the industry essentially is that um, as containers are getting deployed in production, more and more containers are getting deployed in production, basically applications are getting deployed in production, right. there needs to be a, a policy, operational policy for the applications to run, either right. networking related or storage related or compute related. And that is something we, I'm personally driving um, and I think it's resonating well with the customers. Okay. Yeah, we, we wrote a piece recently for Wikibon and we basically, you know, kind of catchy title, Docker's the least interesting part of Docker. You know, I've got to be able to discover other containers, I've got to schedule them, keep them up and running. You know, like you said, uh, there is a lot of value that has to be provided outside of just putting something in a container and, and going from there. Yeah, I think, yeah, so good. As I meant to say, I mean, uh, Cisco, the, the main driver is, I mean, uh, helping our customers with successful business outcomes. Right. So it doesn't matter it's, uh, if you're using containers or OpenStack or any other technology. I mean, technology, as you said, it's a piece of the uh, puzzle. It's combining the technologies, then put the orchestration, uh, the support, uh, the uh, business life cycle, all that, uh, bringing all those things together is what makes uh, our customers successful and us successful at the end, in the long run. If I may add, right, the, the container technology is fairly immature right now. Yeah. Um, the, the Docker 1.9 just introduced multi-host networking, which is like, come on, right? <laughs> um, so it's really, really uh, in early. early stage uh, yeah. in terms of that. But we have, we have done production, you know, you know, a lot of vendors have done that. Um, we know that what it takes to run a production application, I think customers really, um, who are getting more serious, needs to have those same policies. You know, just because I'm now containers, I don't necessarily have, don't have the same regulations, the same uh, security policies and things that you need to have. Yeah. So I think 
if you look at the industry, Docker Compose and Kubernetes part definition, those are still define the application. It doesn't define how the applications are actually placed, what the requirements and from the network, from the infrastructure. Uh, and so we are providing some sort of a framework through the Conte project and also some implementation of it. Yeah. It's an open source project so any vendor can join in and, and contribute. Outstanding. So let, let, let's get back a little bit, you know, like we said, containers, very new. People are interested, but very new. Let's get back to OpenStack a little bit. Uh, you know, we had a chance when we were talking with Lou and, and Rakesh from, from Red Hat about, you know, the multiple ways you can consume OpenStack, right? Manage, you, you talked about self-managed. Right. Give us some sense of, in the self-managed space, how are you guys making it easier? Give us, you know, what, what right. are some of those things that, are, that you're working absolutely, on? Absolutely, So, if, if, some, if customers would, uh, if they have to do it on their own, it's about, I mean, uh, putting, say, uh, Cisco infrastructure and uh, pl plopping, I mean, uh, any other vendor's uh, distribution on top of it. Essentially, it's uh, two plus two equal to four kind of a scenario. So, what we are trying to do is, I mean, uh, uh, we have co-designed and engineered uh, specific plugins around uh, Neutron, or ironic, uh, et cetera, to, to leverage the APIs, the open XML uh, capabilities and the automation capabilities that the infrastructure I mean, offers that's available out there today, and leveraging them and uh, bubbling them up in the OpenStack context. So we hide the complexity of uh, the infrastructure underneath, uh, behind the plugins. At the end of the day, customers can consume all the capabilities of the uh, Cisco infrastructure within the OpenStack context. And all this is co-engineered, co-developed by our partners, uh, Red Hat, for example. Uh, so the, the, these integrations are consumed directly through Horizon, uh, deployed and managed and configured through uh, OSP uh, director, for example. So all these integrations are also the validation, the testing, the configuration, uh, sizing, and the best practices the art that we offer to the customers. It makes it easy mm -hmm. for them to uh, deploy it. I mean, it, it, go, it quickly goes from a science experiment to a production-ready environment. So it's all about providing something that's production-ready, scalable, available for them. So uh, we heard about, I mean, a lot of uh, surveys so far. 65% of the respondents are uh, deploying OpenStack. But they are deploying OpenStack over a period of weeks, maybe months. But our uh, effort, with the joint effort, we are trying to do it in a, a week or two. So that's, that's, the, uh, that's the power we bring to the table for our customers to leverage. Actually, the, the demo we have on our show floor shows us bringing from, a, from a, like a power on to OpenStack deployment in three hours. You know, which is actually a little, you know, it's really great if you can just, it's all automated. Sure. So you just do it, go for lunch or whatever, and come back, hopefully it's up and running. Um, we have found that the, you know, like he was talking about, the, you know, even to just to do a park for OpenStack, people spend days trying to make the hardware and software work together. And I think this kind of effort is going to really help people to say, I want to see the benefit of OpenStack, but I want to spend weeks or months to try to just see the benefits of OpenStack. Yeah. So what you're trying to do is, let's say, within a day, bring up an OpenStack for your for your for your demo or park, whatever. So then you can say, okay, well, I can use it. So that's sort of what you're trying to do. Yeah. So you know, when I think traditionally, you know, we we understand some of the day zero challenges that mm -hmm. we always have in getting yep. things to work. But when I think back to you know, kind of you know my networking experience, it's those upgrades uh, that right. are difficult. Especially most people, I put my network in place and like don't breathe on it. Definitely don't <laughs> upgrade the code. You know, we, we don't want to touch a day. As opposed right. to you, you look kind of the open source world. I mean, OpenStack's releasing every six months. You definitely do an upgrade. You've got to be doing patches. You know, how's that changing? How do you guys think about that inside Cisco and uh, you know bake that into the products? And I mean, th th that that aspect is not easy. You're absolutely right. There's a lot of challenges there. So what we are doing is working with the community, working with the partners ahead of time before uh, the next release comes out. Before uh, Newton comes out, we have been engaging with uh, uh, partners to validate the uh, 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 validate the uh, plugins, validate the uh, various uh, components that make up the solution. So we uh, remove the guesswork out of uh, an upgrade process. So that that so that's an ongoing journey that we will uh, will uh, plan to uh, make it work for the customers. Yeah. So one thing I would add is like I remember talking to one customer. They have like one version of every OpenStack out there. <laughs> like you know one version, like one part on you know you know uh, there was a little bit a year maybe a year ago two years ago like Diablo this SX and everything else, you know because they don't know how to upgrade from you know once they right. deployed on something. Right. Um, one of the benefit of our joint solution that we're creating 
is to be able to do that. So if a customer buys into, so we have right now shipped a few months ago on Juno, and so Kilo. we are we are already working on how do I go to the next versions, and they buy the solution support. We will basically provide them guidance on how to get there, and we'll we will handhold them as they go to the next versions. Most people are actually happy with the version that they deploy. They don't necessarily need to like move every version, even though the community is developing every six months. I don't think people would necessarily follow every six months, right? You know, because once you're in production, you don't want to touch it, to your point, even though it's maybe flexible or whatever. So what we're trying to do is figure out, obviously, is what cadence we want to have in terms of upgrades. Maybe, you know, OSP 7 is Juno. Do we go to the next one or do we go to the following one? So these are all definitely challenging. We need to ensure there's an upgradability um, path and it's fully tested, validated, so the customers can uh, automatically, hopefully, um, upgrade through some sort of uh, s uh, tools that we provide. All right, I want to give you both uh, the, the last word here. Uh, you know, we talk about 7,500 people here, and, and one of the things I think, if, if you talk to most people here, they're open to things going faster, changes happening. Uh, what, what are some of your key takeaways from kind of the attendees here, conversations you're having uh, that you'd want to share with our right, audience? So the, absolutely, the, the interest is certainly there to uh, adopt the newer version and uh, consume the newer features, but it's, it's a journey. So uh, they, are, they are looking at it, they are, uh, it's a conscious and uh, conservative effort, but the intent is to uh, quickly adopt newer uh, features. So they are looking for uh, best practices, talking to other attendees, talking to other companies, talking to other customers uh, to, uh, to find out okay, what worked for them and what uh, they want to leverage for their internal uh, effort. It's a mutually learning experience for all of us, be it the vendors, uh, customers, or partners. It's a uh, learning experience for throughout. So my, my sort of takeaway is that um, people are looking at containers and now they've, they've deployed OpenStack or trying to deploy OpenStack. How does that work together, right? So one of the challenges, do you really need an open stack to, to, to deploy a container stack? I think that's definitely you know, a very valid question to ask. And if you do deploy uh, containers on uh, open stack, you have neutron networking and then you have container networking on top. You know, how does it all work, right? So that's a challenge that people are trying to solve. I think you'll sort of, you know, uh, shake itself out in the next uh, six months or so. So how do you deploy containers in OpenStack? And, and so this is a definitely, I've had like in the last week, three, four conversations uh, from containers having this challenging decision to make on these topics. Yeah, awesome. Balaji and Vish, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, going to be right back, uh, getting towards the end of our coverage here of OpenStack 2016 in Austin. You're watching theCUBE.